Uh, hello. Um, so let's get started. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, my name is uh, Yang Li, or Li Yang in Chinese. I'm the uh, Apache Killing PMC member, and I'm also the co-founder of a startup company called Killing Jeans, which is dedicated to provide commercial service about Apache Killing. So I'm going to talk about um, Apache Keeling and its latest features about uh, real-time plugin architecture and those stuff. Um, by the way, the uh, latest version of Apache Keeling is 1.5. It was not to uh, the, the, the version number gets kind of a re reorg uh, during the time we prepared the presentation. So uh, just to be clear, the latest version is 1.5. So I'm going to talk about uh, very briefly about what Apache Killing is, what problem it tries to solve, and then uh, talk about the uh, basically the, all the new features, plugin architecture, uh, fast cubing, streaming cubing, uh, those stuff. So uh, what is Killing? Um, it's Killing, or uh, Kiling is also okay. Uh, we are a international community. Um, <laughs> It was uh, invented in the eBay um, and contributed to Apache uh, Foundation in the, uh, by roughly the end of uh, 2014. So it tries to solve the uh, OLAP uh, problem on the big data. And uh, by OLAP, we, want to, we really mean interactive analytics. Um, so to be more specific, Killing allows you to do SQL on Hive tables. And uh, in, a in, a, in a very fast manner, usually uh, the response is just a few seconds or less. Um, because uh, the interface is NC SQL, uh, basically uh, it's compatible with all the Hive queries unless you're using some Hive dialect. Uh, and for the most queries, it just can be uh, run on killing without modification. So why is killing fast? Uh, the special about uh, killing is it introduced a offline uh, pre-processing process. Um, so one way to see it is that uh, you can think of Killing is a uh, index, a huge index of Hive table. And that index is built by an offline process, what we call, uh, refer to a build a cube. So you identify a set of Hive tables and uh, trigger the offline build cube process where it does a lot of heavy calculations. Uh, well before the query really starts. Uh, in, uh, typically, the, the joining, the aggregation, the result is remembered and saved in edge base. So when the query, real query came in at runtime, uh, it really has to do very little calculation because we have pre-calculated it already. So uh, for the, for ideally, in the most cases, Killing just have to pick out the pre-calculated result and the return, so uh, it does not it involves very little online calculation. Um, yes, it deals with big data. Um, this data uh, the numbers from eBay is of last year, so by now it, the data is accumulating. I'm very certain it should be uh, beyond um, 100 billion rows uh, in some eBay cases, but uh, that's maybe still not the biggest uh, killing use cases. Um, for example, a uh, a doctor in China Mobile, they claim to ingest 10 billion rows every day into a uh, killing. So uh, killing can do very, very big data. And with that, we really mean uh, uh, big data, SQL, and the very low latency. Uh, we really mean it. It's not one or two very particular case that is fast. Um, for example, what I've seen in the eBay deployment, where we have uh, tens of thousands different queries running on against different data sets, uh, the 90 percentile, the uh, lower blue line you'll see, um, is under three seconds. And uh, the lighter blue line is the uh, 95 percentile. So you can create a query that runs slow. Uh, Killing does not, cannot guarantee every query is fast, but the majority, 90 percentile, is under three, three seconds in this case. Mm. Also, it integrates quite well with the uh, existing BI tools by providing uh, ODBC, JDBC, and also the REST API. So we work with uh, Tabula very well, uh, used in eBay a lot. We work with uh, Excel, Power BI, and uh, um, anything that 
can accept ODBC or JDBC interface. Mm. Also, the throughput is good because, um, like I said, the online processing is kept minimal because thanks to the offline pre-processing, so uh, uh, killing requires a little resource, CPU memory, um, to, to handle a query. And uh, in, um, we did simple tests where we have a moderate machine. We run a full query service instance on it, and you can see the um, scalability of the throughput is linear. So definitely this test does not hit the bottleneck of that uh, system. Uh, and uh, by design, the uh, bottleneck of killing usually uh, is on the edge base side, on the storage. So that's very briefly about uh, killing. And uh, I'm moving to the new features of uh, the latest killing, um, uh, namely the 1.5 release. First, the uh, plugin architecture. Mm, we have shown this architecture uh, a lot of times, I believe. So uh, um, on the left, you have the data source, which is the uh, Hadoop Hive. And it feeds data into the uh, build engine, uh, which is MapReduce, where we do the offline pre-calculation, build the cube. And the result gets persistent in the uh, edge base, in the right. Um, in the old version, Killing is tightly coupled with uh, all these components. Uh, the data source is Hive, the uh, cube builder is MapReduce, and the storage is EdgeBase. Uh, we got question like, uh, could you use an alternative like Spark to build the cube? Or could you feed from Kafka or uh, save the cube in Cassandra or whatever? So these are very interesting questions, so we try to address that. The idea is that to have a clear defined interface on all the three main parts of the killing dependency, the source, the engine, and the storage. And it's all metadata driven. So on a cube, you have the uh, cube metadata, which it defines what particular kind of source this cube uses, what kind of engine this cube uses, and also the storage. So with the metadata, we have the factory pattern to instantiate all the three uh, objects. And uh, uh, they are not connected yet, so it cannot work. To connect them, think uh, the engine as a main board, right? It has two slots need to be filling, the, uh, the, the input slot and the output slot. So the next step is to let the source and uh, the uh, storage adapt and uh, plug in themselves onto the main board, that's the engine. So uh, here the design pattern is the, the adapter pattern. Um, so when the, th the three things get connected, um, so they're set, so they, they can run to, to build a cube. So that's the uh, very simple idea, and it, uh, it worked out pretty well. So, okay, come on, yeah. Um, so on the uh, latest developing branch, uh, thanks to the clearly defined interface, we can have uh, alternative engines and source and storage. Um, uh, that, uh, right now, it's only particular combinations of them work, but uh, we see the long term, the flexibility and the extensibility. Um, I'm, I will talk about the, uh, uh, the yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's good. <laughs> it replicates data into HBase into cubes. Yeah. So it copies all data that you... Yes. Uh, it, the index really covers the whole data set and it's stored. So at the query time, uh, we do not hit Hive at, at all. Yeah, we, we, yeah. But when you create cubes, all data is replicated from it. Yes, that's correct. It has to extract all the Hive uh, data and uh, process them. Yeah. That's right. Um, 
Yeah, um, I'm talking about engines, yes. We have uh, uh, two versions of engines that all depend on, all uses MapReduce. I'll talk about their difference very quickly. And also we have a very early Spark engine. Uh, it barely works, but uh, um, not very useful at the moment. And we, we also have a streaming, uh, experimental streaming engine. It works uh, uh, to, to a minimal scale. Uh, about source, we have Hive, Kafka, and a Spark data frame. And the storage, yet, is, there's still uh, just edge base, but uh, we can extend it. We're thinking about uh, Kudu or Cassandra. Uh, the benefits of the uh, plugin architecture, well, I think it's pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, freedom, right? We, are being, uh, we have the freedom to choose, which is uh, very good. Um, I will not say Zubrick anymore because Hadoop is just uh, too big a family, uh, but um, I'm, I'm free to choose uh, which of the family members I, I'm, I'm good with, right? And uh, extensibility, I can use, I can accept different data sources like Kafka. I can embrace a next generation um, computation platform, for example, Car, uh, for example Spark. And uh, flexibility, I can have uh, different engines living um, at the same time in one killing deployment. That's also possible. You can have one cube preferring uh, one uh, cubing engine and the other cube preferring a different cubing engine because they use different algorithm that uh, just suit for that particular data set. That's, that could happen. Okay, now I'm moving to the next point about uh, fast cubing. Um, it's also uh, about the MR engine version one and MR engine, uh, engine version two. Um, need to talk about the old uh, engine first, so to understand why we have the uh, second engine. Mm. So this is what we call layered cubing, right? It's the um, cubing algorithm uh, at the beginning of the killing. So it's perhaps the simplest implementation you can think of to do a cube on a MapReduce. Um, at the MapReduce side, it just emit all the raw records without any processing. And we leverage the shuffling process, which group the same key, align their values, and feed into the reducer. So reducer have a very comfortable position to, uh, to, to read the whole group of the same key and uh, aggregate them, right? sum them together. So this works. Um, it, it, it needs to be layered because uh, if you do the whole cubing in one map produce, it's just too, too many data to shuffle over the network at one step. So that didn't work out. So uh, we, we changed it into layer fashion that um, you calculate the whole cube uh, layer by layer. Mm. It's simple, but also has problem. Like I said, uh, the aggregation happens at the reducer side, which means um, a lot of unaggregated data get transferred over the network, which is a big, uh, big amount of thing. Um, and that, as, I would do, as we did uh, the profiling, turns out to be the bottleneck of the whole cubing process. So uh, it can be a uh, hundred times of the whole, the size of the whole cube gets shuffled over network. So that's a big pressure um, to the Hadoop system. So to, to improve this uh, layered cubing algorithm, we try to tackle the shuffling problem. So that's where we come in with the uh, so-called fast cubing. And the idea is simple, um, right? The old problem is the reduced side uh, aggregation. So let's try to do the aggregation at the MAPRA side, hoping uh, if we did, right, did it right, uh, once aggregated, the data becomes more, uh, in, in, uh, more, uh, more compact, right? So uh, the amount of total shuffling is, is reduced. So we have a, a in-memory cubing algorithm that runs inside the MAPRA. Uh, mapper, each mapper takes a, a, a split of the data and uh, build uh, all layers of the cube um, in the memory. Um, 
and it's just one round of map produced to, hand, to handle the whole data set. It, the code is quite complex because uh, we, we don't have map produced the shuffling to leverage. We have to uh, code in memory algorithm by our own. And it requires uh, more CPU and memory resource at the mapper side to run. However, um, when we did the version two, put it into experiment, um, we found that it's not true that the, the fast cubing, the new algorithm is always faster. Um, this is actually pretty straightforward because we're hoping at the map, map, map side aggregation can reduce the data to shuffle, but it may not always uh, stand. So for example, when we see the data is very common across data splits, say, um, let's say um, transactions, I, I, I buy something, uh, that's a transaction. If my transaction appears in mapper one and also appears in mapper two, then the both of the mappers will produce records about my transaction. And if we want to calculate to sum up the total amount of my purchases, you have to do the aggregation at the reduced side again, right? To sum up the two records about me coming from mapper A and mapper, um, and mapper B. On the contrary, um, if the data split feed into the mapper are more uh, unique, right? For example, all my transactions just go to uh, mapper A and uh, never appears in other mappers, then um, the, output, the output, the total shuffling data size is really um, smaller than it was. So there's a condition for the uh, fast cubing algorithm to be really faster. It depends on uh, the characteristics, the partition of the data that goes into each uh, of the mappers. So if the data splits are unique, then fast cubing is faster. If the data splits are more kind of more common across the mappers, and uh, actually the layer cubing is, is better because now we, it, in the fast cubing case, we just have one map produced to handle all the shuffling. Um, so, yes. Yeah, we tried, yes, oh, okay. yeah, Sorry. we tried, yes, definitely, uh, we tried, we tried very hard. <laughs> um, so which algorithm to choose? Well, um, finally, we did, we, we did it in two steps. There's a, fir there's a first step called data sampling that we try to sample the data from the mappers to see whether the data are unique or are more common. And depending on the uh, statistics result, we'll choose, we'll smartly choose a better algorithm to run. So that's the final result. And we do uh, experiments comparing the uh, new engine, right, which is the uh, composition of two algorithms compared to the old engine, which uh, has only the layer algorithm. We run about 50, uh, 500 different jobs um, and compare the results uh, from the two engines, so the average overall uh, speed up uh, of the new engine is about uh, 1.5 times faster. Um, the next feature is parallel scan, which is actually very straightforward. Um, Killing didn't think of uh, much on um, uh, parallel scanning before, um, mainly because once aggregated, the data is really um, small in size when uh, to answer a particular query because it's aggregated, right? And usually um, all, the, all the lines uh, you're reading is contributing to the final results. So uh, there's a little need to skip any rows. And HBase did really well when we do sequential scanning. So uh, we're pretty good for, for a while. But then uh, there are complicated cases where, especially when cardinality of the data set is high, and when the, data, when the query is really returning asking for a lot of records, 
then you still have a pretty big data set to scan through even after aggregation. So uh, that's where the parallel scan came in to, um, to, to, be interest, to be interesting. So the idea is very simple. So uh, the cuboid, well, it's a, it's a jargon in, uh, in, in the cube theory. Basically, it's, a, it's another way to say a materialized view, right? It's just a, a, a materialized table, right? Um, it was uh, just on one server, um, HBase region server. And now we put a sharding seed uh, at the beginning of the row key, so uh, the cuboid gets, um, gets partitioned onto different region servers, so they can be scanned in parallel. And the speed up is, uh, it depends on the query. So uh, some fast queries, they were, all, they were always good, right? Partition, if, if the result set is just a few thousand rows, it does not matter you are scanning uh, in sequence or in parallel, that matters really little. But if the result is just um, is a few million rows, then that matters. So this change particularly favors the uh, slow queries. So they get five to 10 times faster. Um, again, we compare the uh, uh, old way and then the new way by running uh, 10,000 uh, different queries, and the uh, speed up overall is about two times, two times faster. That's the parallel scan. Near real time incremental build. Mm. Uh, incremental build is a uh, uh, the day one feature, right? It, it, is, it has been always there uh, when Killing was uh, released. The idea is simple. Uh, I don't want to rebuild the whole cube every time. So I cut the data set uh, by time ranges. And uh, every day I just build the, incrementally build the new data of that day. And uh, as the day segments, uh, the build result is in, in an independent cube segment. As the day segment accumulates, I can merge uh, uh, seven days into a week, merge four weeks into a month, and so on. So it's very easy to just uh, step a little bit further to do micro, micro batches. That is uh, to do small cube segments, for example, every five minutes. And it's um, totally worked. Um, we, we, we have an experimental um, near real time cube engine. It sources from Kafka. It does the in-memory cube, um, and the result gets stored in HBase. Um, one impact of this change is that you, have, uh, you get accumulated a lot of small segments very quickly. And that hurts the uh, query performance, because um, every cube segment is independent. Underlying, that's an independent edge table. So you have to scan through it. Um, if you have, for example, 20, uh, 200, uh, segments, you have to scan, edge, uh, scan different, uh, 200 different edge tables. That, uh, that hurt query performance. So we have to merge the small segments um, more actively. So we also introduced a auto merge uh, that uh, runs behind uh, the scene automatically for you that uh, merges, uh, for example, uh, six, five minute segments into a uh, 30 minute segment and uh, merges 30 minute segments to uh, for four hour segments, for example. It's configurable. Yes? So, so, so these, these cubes and what's defined, what's included in the cube, mm. is that based on user queries and their activity? Mm. Sorry, come again? So, so, so I have my uh, data stored in my HDFS and I have infrastructure, okay, and I have data from all sorts of areas Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a user, or I'm at 10,000 users, and we're all hitting this system. I'm wondering what's actually defining the build and the definition of what's included in each table space or micro cube. So so who's who's defining what's in the cube? I see. Mm. Um, so it, it's uh, we we need to go back to the uh, uh, data model. Um, 
So at the beginning, user have to define or select a set of uh, edge table, uh, yeah, sorry, hive tables. And that is defined what we call a data model that's, okay, that so follows a star schema. So those have to be defined by a data modeler? Yes, as okay. exactly. And that happens well before the query can happen. Okay. And right now, it's only support star schema, so no snowflakes. Yeah. 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 OK. So that's near real-time incremental build. Uh, it's experimental feature. Uh, the limitation right now is that it does not, well, um, it's not very user-friendly. You have to configure a lot of uh, cron, t uh, cron jobs to trigger the uh, uh, five minutes uh, build tasks by your own. And if you have a very high workload, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I didn't make that broke. I wanted to finish your thing. But just on the, on the uh, micro cubes and the auto merging, have you tested it at scale, like with thousands? No. Okay. Yes, I, I'm, I'm saying that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 experimental feature. Um, uh, right. Uh, so right now, it depends on you, a uh, user, to schedule um, where the in-memory cubing, the incremental build, happens. So it could be on one node, where you put all the workload on uh, one, one node. Or you can have a couple of nodes that uh, uh, come in like a round-robin uh, fashion, right? One node doing the five minutes batch, the other doing the 10, uh, okay, 10 minutes batch, uh, the, the batch of five minutes that happens at the, at the 10, right, and so on. Um, so it can work, but uh, requires quite a lot of, uh, quite some annual effort to, 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 to make it uh, run in production quality. Uh, let me put it this way. And we're enhancing this, uh, and it's uh, clearly stated that it's an uh, experimental feature, right? Um, and given the uh, near real time, it's very easy to picture uh, what we want to do if we want a, tree, a true real time uh, query results. It, it didn't happen yet, but it's easy to picture because we're just five minutes away from the uh, true real time. So it's easy to set up a um, memory node uh, to absorb the five minutes data, hold them in memory, and have a uh, hybrid storage interface above the two so that a query coming will hit the memory and hit the cube at the same time. The result get aggregated at runtime and return. So this Lambda architecture uh, could be a future direction to go if the community has such requirement. Um, uh, said it's experimental, but uh, in eBay there is case about uh, the near real time streaming cube in, in production. So that's about the, the SEO operation dashboard, where it collects all the traffic that comes to eBay uh, from the, uh, the the search engines, the Google, the Yahoo, and then we have a dashboard to outline the traffic um, at five minutes near real time. So you can see it go down and up, and uh, if it has a very uh, deep dive, you can um, take reactions uh, very quickly. Um, another new thing is uh, user-defined aggregation functions or aggregation types, whatever you call it. Um, previously, we have a hyperlog log count distinct implementation. And uh, people find that to be very useful. So we uh, kind of more formalized the interface so you can now write different kind of aggregations um, for your domain. And there are a few extensions based on the framework already in the uh, 1.5, the latest release. One is the top one. I'll introduce a bit, lit. Uh, uh, I'll introduce it a bit uh, very quickly uh, in the next slide. Uh, and also, there is a uh, precise count distinct, which contributed from uh, NetEase.com. And also, there's a raw records, because before uh, Killing does not store raw records, it um, only holds aggregated results. So if you want to list out every single transaction that contributed to a sum, Killing does not have that result. But 
uh, with this extension, you can do that. Mm. So uh, um, there's a, a lot of room of imaginations you can put into this direction. Uh, you can create domain-specific aggregations, um, and that should be quite easy. You can, uh, you can read the source code to see uh, the above implementations. They are just um, one or two classes, very simple. So for example, you can, do, uh, you can aggregate user events to detect time series, or you can uh, do a sketch of user groups and uh, implement that as a aggregation type, or you can pre-calculate uh, pre calculate the clusters of some data points, or just as simple as histogram. That's all doable. So a little bit more about top N, because that's a, uh, we see it as a high demanding feature, so it's get implemented um, earlier. Um, so the idea is uh, it's very often to list uh, what are the top sellers of today, uh, those kind of stuff. Uh, so we prefer to pre-calculate the result using a approximate algorithm. And uh, the base of the algorithm is space saving, which is uh, very popular used in a lot of uh, streaming processing. Um, in, uh, in, in, in the MapReduce uh, setup, you still need a parallel version of it. So, uh, there's a, a parallel version of the space saving. I list the research papers underneath. And with the two, we uh, get it implemented, and uh, that's available in the latest version. So if a query like this came in, say, uh, what are the top sellers in the national holiday of China? Uh, what are the items? Uh, now you can just uh, get the result right away from uh, the pre-calculated result. So uh, on the right, you see one row in edge base, uh, the key being that day and the location is China. And on the uh, value side of the edge base record, you have a list of the top seller items, top selling items. Um, Minor features, uh, ODBC enhancements, it uh, works with Tabula, Mar uh, Excel, Power BI. Um, nothing, uh, nothing special. And also we have a Zeppelin integration. Um, we contributed a, a Zeppelin interpreter uh, to that Zeppelin community, and I think that was accepted, and uh, you should find it in the latest Zeppelin release as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, a quick summary. Um, what's new in the uh, latest Apache Killing? Uh, the plugin architecture, which makes Killing uh, uh, very extensible, resilient to survive the change of technology environment. We have a new uh, Cube engine, also based on MapReduce, but it is about 1.5 faster than uh, the previous version. We have a uh, edge based storage uh, that armed with parallel scan, so it's on average two times faster than it was before. Um, an experimental near real time um, cubing uh, technology. Um, user defined functions or user defined aggregations, and better, better integrations with uh, Excel or Zeppelin. So that's it. We still have six minutes, so any questions? Yes. Yes. And, and, and do you have plans to replace that in the future with respect to your thinking? Like yes. Uh, whether we have the plan to use a different distributed computation framework other than MapReduce. Yeah. Yes, Spark is definitely an yeah. option. We tried that. It does not turn out to be uh, that well in the killing particular case. It's quite uh, easy to understand because uh, killing's data is huge and does not fit in memory. So that uh, kills one advantage of Spark. And uh, uh, killing does not do iterative um, map produces. Um, although the layer cubing is kind of iterative, but uh, 
for every iteration, the data is so huge to, to stay in memory, and uh, it, they have to hit it, hit disk anyway, because uh, later they have to be uh, converted to edge base format. So that kills another advantage of uh, Spark. So we, we did some p proof of concept, and uh, just the Spark implementation at the moment, as we tried, uh, is not <coughs> faster. It's just uh, as fast as the MapReduce. Okay. It's just an interesting one when, you, when, when you're basing your core engine on MapReduce. Yeah. So at some stage, it's going to potentially yes. be forced. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, I would agree because if uh, we're talking about huge batches, yeah. MapReduce is pretty good. It's designed for that purpose. If we, the batch getting smaller and smaller, especially in the closer to the more, it's more getting closer to the near real time, near real time side. Um, more resilience, more fast responding is required uh, from the computation framework. So that's where MapReduce uh, is not that good. Right? Yes. Um, did you plan on supporting MGX or did you try something like G Mandarin and double K? Yeah, good question. Uh, Mandarin integration is, is fine. Uh, on the mailing list, one, uh, there are requests about this, and uh, there's a people tried Mandarin integration, and that worked. Um, that didn't work out at first, but after a bug fix somewhere, it, it worked. So a Mandarin integration, that, that line is through. Um, it, it's not very uh, ready out of box, but uh, Google it, and you'll find a solution. Yes. yes. Good question. Um, security right now is uh, at the cube level. So we have a access control mechanism, but the smallest unit you can control is a cube. So if one can read the cube, it means all the data in the cube. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. You mean uh, if uh, the query comes in at a very high level of, of aggregation? Like... Uh, I have a mic here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the audience yeah. uh, like to hear. <laughs> so I'm inter. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm interested in what's the uh, effect, the impact on performance if you get uh, the total set of records uh, uh -huh. on a detailed level of your queue. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what is the impact on performance then? Yes, yes. Good question. Um, obviously, the higher level you're querying, uh, the easier it is for killing, right? If you are querying at a very low level, it, it get uh, closer and closer to the raw records. So yeah. the advantage of killing disappears. So yes, it's yeah. just like you think. Uh, if you query the effort at a very low level, killing, well, uh, loses its ad advantage. Yeah, yeah well, there is HBase is not that good in, in giving those records at that low level, I guess. Good, uh, good point. Um, I, I, I don't want to be offense about HBase, but uh, we see that the, the throughput of record reading of edge base is not that competitive comparing to other, well, say, parquet or uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of true columnar storage. Yeah. 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 yeah, thanks. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Uh, an end user question. If I wanted to. Uh Accomplish the idea of slowly, slowly changing dimensions. Is that something I would do 
at the star level in the hive tables, or can I somehow accomplish that in the data modeling of Killing? Well, Killing has some flexibility to offer, but um, I'm not sure whether you want to change the hive model because that's your uh, data warehouse modeling strategy, right? But the request came in like, what if I want to add one dimension? Do I have to rebuild everything from scratch? Um, you don't have to. Um, I didn't introduce, but there is a mechanism what we call hybrid cubes. That is, you, uh, you link two cubes together. Um, the only difference between them that is the new cube have one additional dimension. And they have a clear cut line uh, between them. And uh, the two together, sitting together, like uh, covers the whole time range, right? So when the query came in, it will hit the old cube if the time is past uh, the cutoff day. And it will hit the new cube if the time is uh, beyond the cutoff day. It will hit both if uh, you're scanning the, uh, across both uh, time ranges. Uh, so that worked. But again, uh, the feature is not provided in a very user-friendly way, so you have to do, you cannot do it on GUI at the moment, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yes. Um, we've been drawing Kylie for a while, and one oh, of the good major to hear. issues that we find is uh, the structs in Hive are not supported yet. Sorry, I lost. The structs, the uh, structs in Hive structure, mm -hmm. like complex data, like math. Ah, yes, yes. Is ah. there any plan to support those? Not yet. Not yet, or not in the real, in the near future. Because uh, again, uh, we have to create specific views to then query it by, by Kylin. Yeah. And then we cannot perform the same query on Kylin and on Hive. Yes, composite data structure, uh, no, no plan yet. Um, yeah, I think that's one reason is because uh, we took the SQL interface, right? You, it's not easy to, to, to express that in, in a SQL. Um, but definitely, yeah, that's a valid requirement anyway. <laughs> yes, one of the killer features of Kylin is that you can perform the same queries on Kylin that you are performing on Hive, yes. but faster. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so this is a gap there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Pocket? Uh, an Ambari. Is, is, do you have an Ambari plugin for no. assistance with her? Not yet. Not yet. Yes. Do you have any other vendors that are contributing on the storage plugins? Storage plugins? Not yet, but I hope the community will help. Yeah. Um, we see cases where the bottleneck um, is hitting edge base, so there is a pretty strong need. I think there will, there will be different storage pretty soon, but I cannot tell when. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes, thank you. Sometime. Yeah.